In this video, we're gonna wire in PVC singles, the conduit system we've installed behind us. When I say we've installed, it's actually Rick that's installed that system. Now, if you haven't checked out that video, it'd be worth going and have a look at it because it uses a different method of connecting to spouted boxes and couplers because we don't thread the conduit. It used the Conlock system from Met Pro, where you just insert the conduit into the box and tighten down the grub screw in order to make those connections. So it's super fast and easy. However, if you're more of a traditionalist and you like to thread, bend and set conduit, me and the Conduit King, Jake Hardcastle, have made a full playlist on that type of conduit. And I'll also leave that in the link in the description so you can check that out. I just need to get Rick finished off so we can start pulling these PVC singles in and see if he's got any top tips. Oh, cheers, is that for me? It certainly is, Rick. It's your nylon draw-through tape. I've got it out of the van, and there's your first top tip. I've installed it when I'm not using it inside a piece of flexible conduit, stops it unraveling in the back of the van, putting itself in eight different knots that any scout would be proud of, and that's for you, Rick. Cheers. I've got a question for you guys. Are we all right to put nine conductors through here? Oh, that is a good question. While you were installing this Conlock system from MetPro, which is incredibly easy, and you haven't checked out that video, I still recommend you go and do so. I was doing all the difficult design. So I had to look at my conduit system and pick the worst piece of conduit. And when I say the worst piece of conduit, the longest piece and or incorporating bends. And I went through that process, and you're right, this piece here, which is two meters in length, has a double set in it, which is made up of 245s, which I class as one bend. And then here we have a second bend. So that piece is two meters in length and has two bends in it. I had to determine whether it could fit those six 2.5 millimeters squared and those three 1.5 millimeters squared PVC singles in it. And to do so, I had to delve into the on-site guide. Don't suppose you better show us the calculations then, would you? Um, go on then. Rick has a really good point. Can I put those nine single insulated cables into the 20 mil conduit that we've installed? In order to do so, I had to do some design elements and I used the on-site guide for that. And you notice the cover on this one is blue. It will change over time. So make sure you look in the latest version of the on-site guide and it's usually the color front that tells you whether you're on the latest edition. We're gonna use Appendix E to carry out this calculation. I've wrote it down here for Appendix E. Let's find the pages within the on-site guide. And here we have Appendix E, and it talks about cable capacity of conduits and trunking, and we're looking at the conduit element within this appendix. And there are some tables that will help us carry out the calculation. The first set of tables, table E1 and E2, are talking about conduits in straight short runs, okay? And ours isn't, ours is incorporating two bends. So we won't be using these two, we'll be using the ones over here on table E3, and on the next page, we've got table E4 to help us carry out this calculation. We see here, and I've highlighted it, long straight runs over three meters, or any length incorporating bends. And what we first of all look at is the factor to be applied for the actual conductors. So each conductor has a cable factor, starting from one mil through to 25 millimeter squared. And we've got a combination of 1.5 and 2.5 conductors going into our conduit, which gives us a corresponding factor for 1.5 of 22 and 30 for our 2.5 millimeter squared cables. They could be solid or stranded. And I know we said earlier on in the presentation that we use stranded cables for greater flexibility but it does suggest that you could use either a solid class one conductor or a class two stranded conductor within our conduit system. Well, we've used this class two one. So we've got our stranded copper conductor. So the table allows for both to be chosen. We're gonna take the factor 22 and the factor 30, but that's for one conductor only. So we've got to work out how many of each of the conductors we've got in order to perform a total cable factor calculation and then we can use the table on the next page. But let's do that first part of the calculation. So we said that 1.5 millimeter squared cable has a factor of 22. And we said that 2.5 millimeter squared cable has a factor of 30. But we need to know how many of each of these conductors we've got. Have we only got one? 1.5 and only got one 2.5 and then that would be okay. However, we haven't. We've got three 1.5s. So we get a total factor for that of three times 22, which is 66. And then we need to multiply the factor 30 for our 2.5 against the number of conductors we have in that. And we have a total number of conductors of six. If 
for that one. And then we do obviously three or 30 times six or three times six and then add the zeros on, we get 180. So that's our total factor for that. So we had the individual conductor uh, factor for 2.5 of 30 and 1.5 of 22. We multiplied it by the number of conductors. We had three 1.5 millimeter squared cables and we had six 2.5 millimeter squared cables. And we got these two numbers. We need the total cable factor. So we need to add these together. And when we add them together, we get 246 as our total factor for the cables. So we now need to use the next table, which is table E4, in order to work out the size of our conduit. So if we bring back in the on-site guide and we turn over, the page and rotate it round. We've got a table now, table E4, conduit factor for runs incorporating bends and long straight runs. So we know from previous that our conduit is two meters in length and it incorporates two bends. We're classing that double set as one bend and then we have a 90 degree bend making a total of two. This column here, the length of the run we said was two meters. And then we need to look across the top table for the number of bends. So we're saying we've got two bends. We've installed 20 mil conduit. So we've already done that part of it. So hopefully the design has been done correctly. We're looking for the factor for the conduit to be equal to or less than that for the actual cables. So if we come across from two, two meters in length across to 20 mil, cause that's the conduit I selected. We're trying to confirm whether I've got it right. The factor, can be as high as 256. So in other words, the cable factor needs to be equal to or less than that in order to install 20 mil conduit. We had a cable factor very close to it of 246, which is less than the maximum factor when we have a two meter run incorporating two bends and we're gonna use a 20 mil conduit we've actually selected possibly right at its limit, but the right size conduit in order to install those nine conductors according to the on-site guide. So we had a factor of 256 for our conduit. And our conduit we said was, if we look down here, was two meters in length, incorporating two bends so we had a conduit factor of 256, which is greater than the factor we had for the cables of 246. Therefore, the 20 mil conduit is the right size conduit that we've installed. Before we get carried away, Rick and install the cables, we know definitely can go in there from the calculation I've just done. Talk me through the process of which you've just done to attach those cables to the eyelet of the nylon draw through tape. Yeah, I've taken the, uh, the three conductors, first three conductors, and staggered them out evenly so that I can apply a tape around them, making sure that the tape is tight so as it's not to snag on its way through. Also, top tape, make a little tab on the tape at the end so when you get to the end of the line, you can easily just unravel it and take that off. With the remaining conductors, I just repeated the same again, uh, also staggering that down further down the, the length for each set of conductors. Okay, and as I'm looking at it now, seems a little bit sticky. Okay, that isn't sticky though, is it? Because that's the lubrication, it's, it's the uh, yellow 77 it that we is, reviewed yeah. on the channel before. And again, if you want to see me using some lube, I'll leave a link for that in the eye above my head. And it should make it an easier process. But you've also done a little tip there because I notice there's no uh, yellow 77 at this top end and it's just a little bit further down. What's your thinking behind that? It's just to make sure that um, it's easy to remove the tape. When it gets to the end, so my hands are slipping off. Oh, right, okay, makes real good. Yeah, so, yeah, that's where the, the majority of the cables are in that fatter section. And obviously it's easier then for these little tabs. Oh, I really like those little tabs. That's a, a clever little trick. Shall we pull this in now then? Yep. So we're gonna pull it to this point here. Uh, we've got the cables on so a couple of different uh, cable spools uh, in outer shot. So start that pulling in process. Cables are coming through. We're pulling them all in in a one-up. So we're gently feeding them in. And they're coming out of this box here. This is the point of which we're gonna pull the conductors out from. We can see the yellow 77 on there, making it a nice, easy pull through. The trick is not to 
Um, pull the cables in one at a time, because the problem being is as a new cable comes in, you get some friction as they rub past each other. Again, that's where the yellow 77 comes in handy. But I know in colleges, often students wire these one conductor at a time because they're learning how to wire them. But we've pulled all the conductors we needed in in one go. We're pulling it out here and not continuing it on because we know that we're going to need to reduce the stress on those cables. And we said that that's the maximum distance which we can pull these in before we have to come out at a drawing in point before we go back in again. So we're getting out of the right length here. And once we're at the right length, we'll continue on with this nylon draw through tape to the next point, And we'll start dropping off conductors at say the socket outlets and the lighting points as and when we pull them in. Okay, let's pull it into the next point then, Rick. So if I feed it in, we're gonna bypass this box. We'll come back to this one. You should find the 2.5s are coming through to you. Yep. I just need to confirm that we've got the right length here to drop some of these off at the socket outlet. Is there plenty there for you? Yeah, there's plenty on that. Okay, let's see if this tab section works and let's see if peeling the tab off, you should be able to disconnect the 1.5s, is that right? Yep, I'll just simply rotate that. And then that means we can drop them off. Just re-diverted our draw through tape so we can pull down at the socket. So that one's gonna be dropped off. We've got the draw through tape now for the keen eye amongst you. We just moved it so we've got it so we can pull straight down to the socket. Do you want to just pull that set in for me? So that will get those and then we can just take the, the one fives off to the correct position. I do like that tab, that's really clever. So again, a little bit of pressure on one end. We're nice and short now so you can see that we're pulling and pushing at the same time. So there they go, they're through. And then we just leave a tiny little curl at the top in the box, just a little curl for me. Again, I'd love your thoughts on that one. Whether you leave a little curl in there or you feel it gets in the way, we'll dress those in a minute. So there'll be a little curl in there. And obviously as we look down here, we've got enough for the socket. And as we've only got a short run, we've got the option now if we wanted to of just pushing the 1.5s through the conduit. So I'm gonna challenge Rick now to put this, uh, without the draw through tape in the 1.5s. Uh, there's a good little tip. Little roll the end over and then it should bump its way along the conduit. Often when people are training, they leave that end straight and it just get caught at the other end. So we're hoping that that will appear at that end as if by magic. Ooh, managed to get away with that one. It just popped off. We've wired to the furthest lighting point on this circuit, so it just requires us now to pull some loops out of the other two positions. So inside here, you've dressed your cables around now. Any tips there for me? Yeah, so when I'm dressing them in, I'm just making sure that uh, no cables or conductors are hiding behind each of these fixing points and also I've got access to the uh, CPC connection point. Okay, and we're going to pull out a loop here, is that right? Here we are, yeah. So we've got a loop down the other end so we should see that come through as we pull it. So putting a loop out there. We haven't got a light at the end point, we've got one here. Just on that. And then we've got one just here, so making our three points. And again, just finding those 1.5 mil conductors to pull those out. And there we go. So and we should lose that loop in the corner and there'll be a box lid going on there. So that's our three lighting points wired. And we've also wired our socket outlet. Just a little bit of finishing off to do. That's as far as we're gonna take the wiring system in this video, but I'm sure it's thrown up some great comments. I'll leave them below, especially if you're training in the electrical industry. I've got a question for you guys. Okay. We spoke about the conduit capacitor. Okay. What about grouping? Grouping, yeah, good question. It's a completely different design element. So I'm sure somebody said, that's okay, Gary, you can get all nine cables into that conduit system, but you haven't allowed for grouping. That's a completely separate calculation. And one maybe that Joe Robinson will cover in a Q&A in the future. If you wanna follow this series of videos on, the next thing we're gonna do is install these robust bulkhead light fins, and we're gonna control them via a PIR. I've got this in my hand. I think your next task, Rick, is to, to ravel that one up while everybody else leaves their comments below and I'll try and get back to as many as I can. So is this how it's going to work then guys? I do all the hard work and you come and take all the glory shooting the video? Absolutely.